hello and welcome to the first oh my to the first oink in the chamber devlog i just want to explain some context real quick uh okay so oink in the chamber is based off of a game called one in the chamber you have one bullet in the chamber a knife three lives instant kills when you hit a player and kill someone else you get your bullet back if you miss you no longer have a bullet and you have your knife to i guess get melee kills uh, to get bullets back and for either first points wins last inning wins whatever oink in the chamber is a uh, a play on that name in a way but that's the game mode uh, using crossbow bolts and pigs in suits instead of you know guns and whatever the first devlog clip in this devlog is from april 27th 2024 the last clip is from may 29th 2024 and this retroactive uh, voiceover i guess this present me that you're gonna keep seeing is recorded on july 1st 2024 life has been very rocky and these clips kind of show that. However, I still want to make the video. I just don't want the video to be that depressing. <laughs> I'm in good spirits now, and I'm going to take advantage of this moment to create these retroactive voiceovers. That was just like the mood. And so the little progress that I got done was still a big win. So it's like two months of footage, but I think it ended up being like 16 hours of game development. But anyway, let's just get into some of the starting clips. I'm using Godot for the first time ever. I'm, I'm working on networking code in Golang for the first time ever. And, and so that's kind of where this story begins. 31 minutes and 52 seconds. That's how long it took me to, to do this. Wee! Oh, oh my God. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and I genuinely got a little lost in it, which is great. The learning process, man, sucks, holy crap. It's funny because I used to get all like, oh, I'm not gonna have any progress for the devlog or the learning log, and it's like, well, it's because you didn't do anything this week, Mark. The goal is have an objective. I got a player modeling with a crossbow and it's moving. This is the default movement handling. Oh, look, you can see the capsule. How, how quaint, how quaint. Bring in the models that I made, heck yeah, dude. I'm a little under the weather today. Okay, um, it's not working, but I just wanted to show what I'm doing at the moment uh, because I realized what I need to do. This is, I don't know, an interesting discovery, kind of, because the rigid body is meant to be controlled only by physics, which I guess makes sense, and a static body is meant to be not controlled by physics. But if I click this and then it falls down, let's say it was still shooting, as I walk around it, it follows me. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. It took me about 15 minutes to like actually get started, so. <laughs> I, I'm not going to jujitsu tonight. I cannot get anyone sick. Okay, it's somehow, like what? Like, look at this. Why does this happen? I love game, oh, oh hey, it actually did, oh my God, it's it's like, oh, it's cause it's colliding. Okay, it's cause it's colliding with me, but look at that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Oh man. No, this is fun, this is, this is, this is gonna be the crappiest code maybe I've ever written, but that's okay, because this will be my first actual game. There's a static vault now. This is going to get cleaned up, I swear to God. I should have figured out the logic and get things functioning first. Now, if I do just add child, I'm wondering if that's the position issue. Yeah, it is. And I think what's happening is that it's not actually, cause they're moving with me, right? Which is annoying. If I wanna set the position, it needs to have the same parent as me. But what I do need to do is just, what if I just multiply it by two? It's not that it's colliding with me. Well, that's really annoying. So I think one thing worth, worth coming here to note is that learning how to use an engine requires you to understand what the engine leverages and what its strengths are and how to use it to the best of your own ability having done you know the tutorials and read some articles about how godot works i i got the node hierarchy but it was taking me some time to really really get what the strengths of it are and i look forward to you know building upon this when i go to work on oatc later this week for example all of these recordings there's just so much of me yapping about what my process is of figuring it out and the mentality i have like right now is figuring this stuff out is way more important than going to find out how to do it figuring stuff out on my own drawing diagrams i kept getting frustrated because i know these things aren't the best way you're about to see me do a double get parent which still feels icky so a lot of this learning was not just like how to do programming how to do game dev it was honestly just how to use an engine and leverage it for what you are trying to execute. And that's just the learning process. Cause we're, we're on the crossbow item. 
getting the parent is going to be this, which is then you can get the parent of that. So if I did get parent dot get parent, which I I don't want to be working up and down the hierarchy like this. Uh, it just does not feel great. Let me walk away from Yes! That was it. <laughs> I'm a developer, sure, but I'm not a game developer, so I don't know what the good practice here is. So what's happening is that the player movement script is moving everything in the scene. I want to also move the player's crossbow though, right? Because this should also go up and down. Left and right works. Up and down is, is, is ugh. So yeah, now what I'm gonna have to do is, I'll get this being not, you know, making you wanna vomit. Those are just some, some like fun little things. Something that's enjoyable about game design is that like, everything is an illusion, right? And you have to create that illusion, but like when you rotate the wrong way or bolts just gather in a big clump like that, it's just, I don't know, it's fun. Yeah, now for, uh, we'll call it a not so good day. Pretty much I open Godot, I hit play, and then it just wouldn't start. I'm gonna go edit a video. I... <sighs> Hold on, I just don't know, I just don't. I don't, stop. <laughs> why, why does the name matter, dude? I don't know why that happens, but whatever. New dawn, new day, um, camera rotation works. Been working on this for 29 minutes. If the mouse moves, we just rotate it. That's it. There's there's nothing more to that. And this is what happens when you don't know something and part of the pain of the learning process is up and down movement, somewhat contradictorily, is on the X axis, the local X axis, and the left and right movement is not. And if I try to rotate up, down? Yeah, see, I'm not I'm not going more down. Cool. Uh, 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 uh. And then uh, as I click, arrows spawn in. And I imagine this is a similar problem because it's using the global origin. It's not using anything related to here. I think I did it. I realized that I was applying a vector that existed within itself. I have no idea what that means. Pew, 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 pew. And it, it looks normal, like it, it, you don't really think about it. I'm gonna be honest. Because <laughs> if it's straight, it's fine. But as we see, I wonder if we don't add an impulse, what happens? Whatever, I'm taking a break, I'm so confused. I have had a couple of days where I haven't done anything. And I sat down because I had an idea. It's been four minutes and 20 seconds and I fixed it. The last couple days, it's been difficult. You just use the basis. It's that easy. It's just that easy. You set the same position and then, because I was like, why am I setting the rotation when I can just set the direction? But then I was like, wait a minute. The, ba the basis does this by, by definition. Bro, it's so easy. Why did it take me so long to freaking do this? I mean, I know the bolts are bigger, but whatever. So much of this is gonna have to be redone, but that's okay. I'm just, we're just running through them. Pew, 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 pew. Someone can start up the game and start shooting arrows by left clicking in a first person view. The first milestone has been complete. Like, freaking final. Ah! Oh God. Oh, oh, the camera still needs work. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, so I kind of descended back into the chaos of my own mind for almost three weeks. I'm getting a bolt firing, I'm moving around. Cool, not much to say about it. I made a dummy model in Blender, simple 3D model, because I realized, you know, maybe I should just start making a single player game because once I get the dummy hitting, all that just communicates with the server because I've been reading about how games like Valorant do their multiplayer server setup and the fact that everything's an illusion, blah, blah, blah. And this is also where I get into networking, which is the part that I find the most interesting. We'll see if the clips back that up though. <laughs> So it's like a million years later and I finally did like the tiniest shit. <laughs> I made a quick dummy model and then I just kind of threw them here in the scene. The dummies might just fall over now, but I can knock them over. 
Hehe, <laughs> loser. Um, this was completely inadvertent, but um, you can actually knock them over. Aiming's better than I thought it was gonna be, actually. I still wanna tweak that, obviously. I don't need a rigid body. When they collide, I wanna do my own sh Like, I just wanna s freeze the bolt and have it stop there, you know? Yeah, it's just a... <sighs> Signal emission, I think? This is the worst code I've written in my life, and I'm at this point resolved to just write this shit and then rewrite it from scratch. Because wow, things don't feel right. When I fire, there's a sound effect, nice. And when it lands, there's also a sound effect. Collision boxes are a little, little bigger. Two things that I'm a little wary of. First of all, when the arrow is shot, we're using move and collide. I think it would be better if each dummy had its own area. And when this, when the area bodies entered, then we trigger collision. I literally have a sticky note on here from months ago that says your first game will be bad. That's me. That's Premiere. And that is the sticky note. Shout out to the Waddle Dee. The spear is the inspiration for the melee in this game. Totally irrelevant. I just meant to record this. I think I, I knew it was going to be bad, but... Writing low quality code in an intentional manner is a very strange thing. My focus isn't on the code quality, but just learning how game engines freaking work. It'd be cool to write my own engine as a learning endeavor, but I'm not trying to learn how to do that right now. <laughs> I don't know what the correct kind of angle to tackle these things is. Yay! But I think having a player-centric view of development is just how I think. Time to send UDP. I think I'm gonna start by sending JSON data and then eventually I will maybe incorporate protobuf. Networking is really fascinating and working on these systems is kind of the, the, the challenges I wanna solve, I guess. Okay, so fun fact, like ITC logs are taking up 170 gigs. This is what was generated the other day. I didn't realize it saved the logs. I need to force quit VS code. I'm trying to use signals because I feel like that's the way I'm supposed to do it. So I have three options, I think. You know, a player shoots an arrow and either then misses or hits, right? Because the server is our source of truth. So this hit function needs to make it in the server. But this requires a connection setup within the dummy. So I don't want to do that. Therefore, I think I, I could send it back to the player and the player can hit the server. But again, same problem. I don't want the connection to be on the player level. I don't know why I called it victim. I remember having the same naming problem when I made this as a Minecraft minigame. This signal needs to emit, but then it needs to be heard by the main scene, which I don't know how to do because we have the dummy main scene. We have the dummies dummy parent. Cool. What we have now is when something emits a signal, it has to be in the same tree as something else. And you can, what I didn't want is to have player one to shoot an arrow and then hit and then hit a dummy. And then once this is hit, it passes it all the way back up the chain to get back to main scene. And that's why signals are important <laughs> because you can all, these are asynchronous, I would imagine. What's nice about the fact that we have a server here, as long as we update a client and update the player that gets hit, it doesn't, you know, we can, it's okay if the server's a little behind, but that's a way over optimization. When the signal is emitted, it, we connect it dynamically. I like to do as much encode as I can because we're, we're loading these, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. So in other words, when the game is final, final lot, well not final, but the thing with games is that everything is an illusion. <laughs> My point of view as a player, I'm just seeing models running around the screen. When my position is sent to the server, that server just sends that position to everyone else. And then the game takes that signal and just makes the model move, right? What's kind of nice is that when I fire a bolt, that path can continue on everyone's screen. I'm not even gonna think about that, because holy hell. And also we're using sockets, so the connection is gonna be a consistent established connection. We're not making a post request. So now I just need to, I need to go and figure that out. I think I did it. I just changed all this stuff to UDP. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> and go. Uh, I lost my go docs that I had open. It just, there's just a lot of floating terminology, I think. Our main script, we establish a connection, 
Godot has this packet peer UDP thing. UDP connections are, I guess, they don't actually exist in theory. We have our server, let's restart that. We see that our server, the RLN is four, my local address, and then the, the port. So that's as expected, right? These are just the ASCII values, which is fine. No, it's not. Yeah, no, 97's A. Oh yeah, because these are lowercase, this is uppercase. I'm gonna try to make this brief. What I was kind of discovering is that the server is taking uh, UDP packets and it's just a, a buffer of information. So for example, the what we're seeing on the server from the game client is is this, right? This first array has a zero at the start, a 99, a one, two. As a web developer slash someone who's done backend services for REST APIs, it's very simple to just be like, hey, the username is Mark and the password is this, and the route is called login. Because on the backend service, it just says, if someone hits login, then pull out username and password from that request. And that's kind of easy. But all of a sudden on the server, there's nothing that's kind of like, my initial thinking is that I kind of have to create my own routing. So in other words, if this first list is the one that comes along and this first uh, integer in the array of bytes is zero, then in that case, we'll go ahead and say score increase. So, you know, the the second item in the buffer is gonna be 99. And the third item at index two is gonna be the player ID, for example. Or if it's one, we might say that this is, you know, game number 23 and uh, the player ID is 145 or something like that. So, I don't know, cool little discovery that I sort of made. I guess I'll show some of the time lapse here, but yeah, so stuff like this, I think it's more fascinating. And I also wanted to add that because that contextualizes a bunch of the if statements that I believe you are about to see. Start successful. We hit play. Hello, Mark from that address. Do this. We do this. I'm, I'm praying, brother. I'm praying. I missed. Ah! Ah! Victim ID 200. Uh, I don't know why it's 200. I'm so good at this game. Oh my God, six kills. <laughs> Woo! Uh, why is this 200 though? <laughs> there are no more dummies. This is this is kind of fun to see this like actually doing shit. So I guess we would spawn an empty thing and I gotta do for future me. Um, okay, so we have one, two, three. We have two hundred. I don't understand where the two hundred comes from. Why is it two hundred? Oh, <laughs> I have a computer science degree. Yes, I do. Integers fine here. We won't ever exceed that. Well, I guess it will never be so high as to be four, five, six. So dummy one, two, two is hit by one, one, one on the server we see an error. Basic computer science, my friends. I just, it's too much Python. That's what I, that's what I'm blaming here, okay? Send score back to Godot and print. The way this works is I'm literally holding on to the score values in zero and one, but what needs to happen is that, well I, well, I think this is okay, you know, changing, getting this function index. The rest of this buffer needs to be JSON sent from Godot to the server with UDP because of the packets issue. And I think I'm gonna just do this without trying to think if it's right or not. But for now, I'm only sending along one packet, so we're fine. I have not put in more than 10 hours in this entire devlog, probably. Like, it is ridiculous. <laughs> So we have come full circle. Um, I don't know what happened, but let me try that one again. <laughs> yeah, so we've come full circle. Uh, thank you for making it to the end of the devlog. I appreciate it. Would love to hear, I don't know, feedback, suggestions. Obviously the game's still at its early phases. As someone who's been so obsessed with learning in the most optimal way for so long, I've realized it's time to just embrace learning the hard way. Doing things the hard way is really the only way worth doing them. I want to, I don't know, forge the habit, I suppose, of live streaming my work on both One in the Chamber or Oink in the Chamber and some 2D Lua messing around that I've been doing and maybe even some like drawing and sketching streams. But I like devlogs in this style. Maybe I can make them more creative, a little more engaged, but the whole retroactive voiceover thing uh, is a little more fun and I think makes for a better video, especially when the clips were as stale as they were. But for as long as I'm unemployed, at least, I think it's a good way to pass the time as well as make use of the time. Uh, not kill the time, though. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one, and I will leave you with this last note. I'm just at a point where I feel like this can actually become a game. So we take those.